Alan. What are you doing? So this is where we're up to. What, turbos? Yeah, didn't he say he wanted a turbo? N maybe you did. Mark didn't request that. It's a point. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We've been working on the President and the Bedford, but we're still waiting on some major bits and pieces for the, the van, so we've been blazing away on the President and we thought we made pretty good progress and we might actually get it going, so let's keep working on it. Woody's made a set of plug leads or core, what do they call them, wires? Plug wires? Spark yeah. wires, yeah. if you're in the States. They're the same thing. We've got a fuse box over there. It's just an eBay fuse box that I've added. Nothing wrong with Haltech fuse boxes, just that it's physically quite large and I didn't want to take up space that wasn't required because we only need two relays and three fuses. I've picked up the power for that, which powers the whole system from the original uh, point of the old ECU where it got its power supply from. So it's all good to go. Pretty much all we're waiting for now is to get some fuel up to the engine. So I've done the lines in the engine bay here. Now we're going to have to go down the back and have a look in the boot and see what we're up against. Uh, it didn't look pretty and I don't think it's going to get any better. Just a bit of pre-warning here. If you're a car guy, what you're about to see may be disturbing. So viewer discretion is advised. That's a fuel pump. That's not meant to be here. Probably be all right if it was on the back of a BMC Mini or something like that, but it shouldn't be in this boot. This here is the uh, fuel. I'd like to say it's a sender unit, but it doesn't actually do anything except for have a pipe that runs up and goes into this fuel pump. So it's not meant to be there, and there's no fuel gauge, there's no anything. So I'm not really sure what the theory behind this system is. It's actually, a, from what I can see, I think it's a Commodore um, fuel sender unit with the pump in it. So um, it's one of those spring-loaded things that sort of has its own surge tank built into it. I don't know why it's in there. I guess the fuel sender or the pump or something's died in here at some point and they've replaced it with that. But we're going to have to have a bit of a look inside there and see what other you know, horrendous things are involved here. So I've popped it open. It had, it has a phenolic spacer. It has screws that go down that these sort of were screwed down and bottomed out, I think, in the tank. And then these nuts were wound down and that's what's held it down. So All that jizz. I think that might be plumber's silicon. As you can see, this does nothing. I don't really care about that. I'm more. <laughs> you know where the guy worked? Tweed Heads Holden, corner Wharf and Board Streets, Boyd Streets. I won't be there anymore anyway. Um, I'm more offended at the cutting of the floor. It was pretty bad. Yes, um, my knuckles are offended too. Have to go get the tetanus booster. So what are we going to do to rectify this? Yeah. Problem, Alan? Well, we did some preliminaries on this um, when Mark still had the car down in Sydney. And um, he's an old Datsun fiend from way back, so 
we sort of figured that it's probably got the same sort of sender unit as some other Datto in the 80s, so he went and hunted around and found a HR31 Skyline um, fuel sender unit, and it has the same bolt pattern as this, so we're going to use that and put a new pump in it and hope hope that this works. But we'll have to get we'll have to dig further into it before we know whether that's going to actually do anything, because a fuel gauge would be handy. Why is the sticker still on your hat? Because I'm a motocross star. So this, we can see something down in the fuel tank that looks like, well it looked like a magazine, which it's actually a Nazi Goring packet. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I don't even like. <laughs> well, it must be to stop it going through. Once we got the homemade uh, fuel pickup, it was just a pipe in the tank, really. Once we got that out and peeled off all the other homemade bits and got down back down to a stock Nissan tank with no pickup unit in it. We were then able to measure it. So basically just drop the ruler in and see what the depth of the tank is. And that's your sort of marker about where this pump needs to sit. So the original pump is a big, big old unit. That's what they looked like in the eighties. Uh, now they're tiny and flow 10 times as much. But uh, so, it, uh, this hanger wasn't actually long enough, so I've had to make a couple of modifications to it. I've just um, got a piece of 44 mil tube and just split it, cut it off and split it up the middle so we could clamp the pump because it, it didn't actually reach up into here, wasn't long enough. So I just welded that on. We have unsoldered the uh, wires that went to here out of these connectors and soldered the fresh wiring in uh, there's, no, there's no problem doing that that's how it's done in the first place so you just heat it up with solder and you can pull them straight out there's an eyelet there and you just slide the wire through and then add new solder and you're good to go quite often these wires aren't big enough for an, a modern pump because old pumps that flow no fuel draw no power and these ones do so um, this is a um, what used to be called a Walbro uh, GSS 340 yeah something like that 340 yeah um, they're called TI Automotive now so if you're wondering why they've changed their name go and ask corporate management but it's the same thing so um, that's heaps enough fuel for this engine it's not a big power thing so it um, should be sweet as we've put a new in-tank hose in it in tank hose is not the same as out, out of tank hose, so make sure you get submersible hose when you're doing in tank stuff. The hoses will very often swell up to um, gigantor size and your car will stop. So ask for submersible when you go to the parts shop. Other couple of things we had to deal with is uh, this is the low fuel level uh, sender. It was up here in this little bracket here. Obviously, low fuel light was probably going to come on at a quarter of a tank there, so I just sort of stretched out the wires as far as we could go and just zip tied it into place. And also just given this little tweak, um, so everything sort of sits. That's going to stay empty on the gauge, providing it works. That's going to have the light on, and we've still got some fuel in there, so you're better off having the light on and not running out of fuel or just lend it to your wife or significant other and they will do it for you so we're ready to put it back in we just need a new o-ring because the other one swelled up a lot swelled? swole? was swollen? you're the English master you know how like 
to get the correct grimmer. Probably your biggest issues you're going to have with fuel senders are the gasket or o-ring in this case leaking after you've removed it and refitted it. Uh, O-rings tend to swell to one and a half times their sides and, and gaskets tend to shrink. So keep that in mind when you're pulling it apart that you may need to replace. And also, as Woody pointed out, particularly in the Nissan world, these bolts are only 5mm. They don't need to be done up tight. And if you crank them up, they will snap. And then you'll be sad. And or you'll, you strip the and you'll smell thing. like fuel. I've cut these bolts down, but they actually need to be cut to come down more, so they must be very, very short bolts, because that's not real long. So we'll trim a few more down and get that bolted in. I've wired it up already. Even the colours almost matched. So we've worked it out. That should plug in. Then we've got to go underneath and pull out all these old lines, because they're not... <laughs> one of them's even... <laughs> One of them's a power steering hose, so not ideal. So we'll get underneath and sort that out, and then we'll get a bit closer to go time. Fuel pump's fitted. We've replaced the hoses uh, with fuel injection line, new stuff. Uh, remember that just because it says fuel hose doesn't mean it's fuel injection hose. It should have fuel injection written on it, or sometimes they put not for fuel injection written on the carby hose, which is very confusing when they cut it off right where it says fuel injection hose. <laughs> anyway, make sure it's the right stuff. It is different pressure ratings, obviously. Now we're ready to configure the ECU. We have done a fairly detailed full episode on doing this way back in the VL build days. Um, you'll find it here if Woody remembers to, oh, put, yeah, that's right. to put it in. Yeah, it's a sport for him at the moment to just not put the card link in and make me look <laughs> stupid, but we'll see what happens. So if you want to get right into it, that really explains it in detail and also gives you some um, pre-dyno tips. We're just going to do it pretty briefly with this one here. This is a simple engine, so it's a good example. Uh, so the first thing I do is got to go in and assign your wiring to your sensors to your uh, crank angle sensor, to your TPS, all that sort of stuff. Uh, this loom is pre-assigned to, to the, for the most part for the major things like coolant temp, air temp, uh, TPS and um, trigger. So it is assigned, but you do have to go in there and um, sort of put the calibration in. So I'm using a Holden coolant temp and air temp sensor. So I go in there, I find that, and I put that calibration. It's all in a drop-down menu. It's really easy. Uh, I tell it what type of uh, crank angle sensor we're using, which, again, is a Holden one. So that's in the calibration. You, you click that in. It auto-fills for the most part. Done deal. Then we tell it what sort of in, what, how, how big the injectors are, whether they're paired. We tell it the, the, um, the engine size the amount of cylinders it's got, what the firing order is, and what sort of coils we've got and how they are fired. So put all that data in, it's pretty straightforward, it's all drop down menus, done deal. Uh, injector size, whether they're paired or not, etc. Uh, then we have to go forward and make that crank angle sensor sync with the actual engine position. So it's timing light time, you probably need a mate for this. One guy cranking, one guy checking, then you just have to keep changing numbers. If this was a engine, say, like a, a more modern engine, like a Barra or an LS, they have fixed crank angle sensors, so it doesn't matter. Look, like, if you click on the box and say, this is, it's a Barra, it'll auto-fill it, and the number's probably going to be spot-on correct. So you still check it, but it's going to be pretty right. In this case... We got a homemade crank angle sensor and I've just dumped it in anyway because in reality it doesn't matter where I put that because I can change it in the software. So what we've done is crank it over, try and find where the number is, mark is, couldn't find it, so I just keep adding 90, 90 degrees or 100 degrees or whatever until it sort of comes within the vicinity and then we trim it. It's a pretty fast process if you've got good spark and everything's working. Once you've got that, 
here can assume your spark's good. Then I usually just spray some fuel down the intake rather than turning the injectors on. Um, we normally turn the injectors off before we do anything because you don't want to flood the engine for no reason because your crank angle sensor is not working properly or whatever. So spray a bit of fuel down there. If it fires up, sounds like everything's sort of half okay and it's not blowing fireballs out the intake, then you can probably turn your fuel on. If it's blowing fireballs out the intake, then the timing or the your coils or something's wrong. So don't try it, keep trying to start it. It should just fire up on a bit of spray, a bit of fuel down the intake. So once you've got that sorted, then you can turn the injectors on and try and start it. You don't need to mess with maps. You don't need to mess with anything. It will just run because this is VE based and the VE maps are pretty close. It's not an old ECU. It is easy. Easier than a carby. And that's where we're up to now, Alan. That's where we're up to. So timing check, etc. fireballs out the intake uh, we just use brake cleaner you can use whatever you like as long as it's some sort of fuel um, you're better off with more than less if you put too little in it might get a lean backfire if you put too much in it doesn't usually matter especially when you're using brake clean so it did start up okay and it sounded like it was on eight happy so now we can turn the injectors back on and start it up off its own injection system and see how we go so I'll enable the injectors again Right. Things don't always run perfectly, you can have issues and most people probably will. Uh, we've got an issue where the engine's just turning off by itself. Um, it starts and runs and runs like a charm for what seems like a, a time frame, like a, a certain period and then it switches off. So we're going to have to do some diagnosis on that. Um, so basically what makes the engine run? Fuel spark. Um, so it's either running out of spark, running out of fuel or the entire electrical systems turning off so we just need to do some diag to find out which one of those it is so we've still got the timing light hooked up so we can check for spark um, when it's when it turns off um, I've got a test light I can check for power supplies to see if the power switches off while the at the time that the engine switches off and we'll go from there you're gonna test for power there now or not yeah, I'll, you do spark and I'll do All that right. and see what happens. Clear prop. Yo. Twelve seconds later. That was still flashing when that went off. Still got ignition power. Meanwhile. Fuel pump. That, yeah, that's definitely still flashing. Um, do you want to go see if the fuel pump works? At the back. See if it, you can hear it turn off or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that fuel pump switched off before 
I've got no sink issues or anything up here. It's all working. The fuel pump the power fuel was on. So your fuel pump switched off and then the engine died like two, right. three seconds later. So there could be something in the... So we, we didn't end up running our own wire to the fuel pump. We found the wire and, and just joined to it. So there could be some, another module along the way. So we'll check power at the fuel pump in case something's intercepting it in between. Oh, like some, there's a control module in between or some, something like that? Yeah, so... One hour later. So you had, you had so it's got the same power supply that it has up the front. It just turns off just after RPM finishes. But yeah, the pump did switch off. Earth. Um, yeah, actually, some R32s had a... Like the old ones had a earth control for the... Like a fuel pump control module, like a little basic thing. Can you just... Can you probe the plug here with the earth and just connect the LED test light to that earth? Is that what? Yep. Just FYI, that noise you can hear in the background is Mark's interior fan in there. So that's running now, Alan, off the fuel pump earth? Yeah. Yep. Eventually. Is that a relay clicking? I heard a relay turn off when it turned off. Can you just wire that earth straight? Like, does it need to be earth via the fuel pump? Or can you just earth that out? We can just ground it to the body, yeah. Is that, that won't matter, will it? No. But you just have to find a good ground, that's all. Why don't you use one of these? Where was it? Why don't you use that hole right there that that was? That's where the old one was ground. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look how good that earth is. Yeah, it's mint. Oh, focus issues. Oh, yeah, look at that earth. And you have to use an industry standard tech screw too. I need, I have to find that relay. I can't not. <laughs> yeah. Found it? Yeah, there's a blue relay here. Let's put it right at the back for no reason at all. What you gonna do with that? Got no idea why they would do this, but what else? So that that's the yeah. I'll test it, but this white wire here that goes to the ground, I'd say that's going to there. It's, it's this thing is controlling it for whatever reason. So we'll just join those. Yo dog, I heard you like relays, so I got you a controller for your relay so you can control that relay while you relay. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna join it for a moment and see what happens. It looks like, a, it's like a tinned wire, like a resistive wire or something. You're the boss here, I'm just yeah. the camera guy. If I could find a bolt hole that I trusted, I would ground it, but... I can't. How long are we going to wait? It's about 30 seconds, I think. A few moments later. Are we calling it a win? Yeah. Why is there like brown stuff coming out of the exhaust? As in like when you rev it, it's like rust particles coming out. <laughs> You can almost guarantee that it probably is rust particles coming out of it.
she's all up and running. It's running pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it um, straight off the base map. I might fish around and see if I can find a more suitable map to import, just a, a VE map and a Spark map before we get it tuned. We'll, um, we've got a few things to do before that. Uh, I've just sort of jerry-rigged up the, the wiring in the back there. I still haven't actually worked out what's going on. I have a few theories, but it's got to be a fuel pump control sort of system, but I'm not sure how it's doing it because it kind of doesn't make much sense at the moment. So if you've got any ideas and you're a Nissan guru from the 80s, hit the comments. But I think I'll just ground it out and it'll work. Mark's got a bit of a wish list. We might address a couple of things on there and do them if we feel like it. A couple of uh, exhaust leaks and stuff like that. I'd really like it to have a new exhaust fitted to it because it's not um, very nice and it is 100% original. So I don't know how well those catalysts are handling being this old and having a carburetor pouring fuel into them. What about what size turbos we using? Um, haven't decided yet. I've got a bit of an idea, but well, that's we also have to talk to Mark about that. No, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want turbos. Sounds odd, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like you with your MR2. What are you, why are you in your put a turbo on it? Dude, don't even start. <laughs> Anyway, everything's working, so we'll move on and do a few tidy-ups and get to the dyno, I guess. What about a word from our sponsors? Do we need a word from the sponsors? Uh, do we? Do we? Maybe. I don't know. Here's a word from our sponsor. That's right, we're sponsoring our own video, and you know why? Because we can. Have you got a special occasion coming up that requires you to look your best? Maybe you're skippering your mate's boat. Maybe you're having dinner with your favourite person. Or maybe you just want to look your best on a Sunday. Well, we've got the shirt for you. Introducing the Skid Factory Turbo Button-Up Tee for $50 redos plus postage. But if you spend $90 or more in the merch store, we'll send it to you for free. But wait, there's more. Check out the bargain bin in store where we've got lots of bargains. Lots of shirt sizes, lots of old shirts. Random stuff still on the shelf. Check it out, pick it up for cheap. <laughs> Available at https forward slash colon forward slash www.theskidfactory.com. Do we end it there? That's all I've got time for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back. We'll be back next week with some more Skid Factory goodness. Why am I holding my arm like this? Because <laughs> you're a retard. <laughs> we can just roll with that if you want. Just standing there looking. It's supposed to be. Sh Be like that time we did this and you took 53 goes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Tell you what, that's a tough bit of nuzzy goring packet. That sucker's not going to be breaking down too quick. <laughs>